Harta Lega Holdings is decommissioning its production facility in Bestari Jaya Slango and consolidating operations at the NGC facility in Sepang amid the tough market landscape. The glove maker said it made a difficult yet necessary decision to take off four production plants with 40 production lines from its capacity by year end, a move that is expected to give rise to an impairment loss of 347 million ringgit for FY 2023. It said in a stock exchange filing today that further provision for retrenchment costs and contract obligation expenses amounting to about 70 million ringgit is expected for FY 2024. The decommissioning exercise should take about six months. Affected employees will be given opportunities for redeployment to its NGC facility, competitive severance packages and access to outplacement support, a specialised help desk and counselling. Once the exercise is completed, Hartaliga expects a reduction in operating cost and depreciation, which will benefit its bottom line. Shares in Harta Lega traded 5.08% lower at 1 ring at 87 at the close, giving it a market capitalization of 6.41 billion ringgit. Prime Minister Dato Sri Anwar Ibrahim called on the EPF to shift its investment portfolio to comprise 70% domestic investments by year-end and to especially focus on strategic infrastructure. Anwar was officiating the opening ceremony of Munaro KWSP today. He hopes the EPF's investments in Malaysia at 66% of its portfolio can be increased, with investments in strategic infrastructure such as the Plus Highway and the Smart Tunnel. The Prime Minister said he has discussed with the EPF as well as Kazanakh National on identifying a new direction and expanding their respective investment frameworks to upskill the nation's youth, prop up the growth of the startup ecosystem, new industries and the agricultural sector in terms of food security. However, Anwar assured that there would be no interference with the EPF's investment affairs under his administration, in a veiled hint at prior instances of government interference in the past. Sapura Energy obtained an interim stay from the KL Sessions Court against the court's earlier decision to allow a discovery application over its former CEO's remuneration and incentive package. The application was filed by Economy Minister Rafizi Ramli to get Sapura Energy to produce documents disclosing Tansri Shahril Shamsuddin's pay package, which the former said did not commensurate with the firm's financial performance. Judge Lailato Zuraidi Harun Elias Harun allowed the stay of her previous decision pending the company's appeal at the High Court. She also directed the parties to exhaust affidavits as well as to file written submissions for the firm's application for a permanent stay and fixed June 28th to deliver her decision on the said application. An MOF representative on HRD Corp's board has reportedly called for the termination of a program within the agency amid alleged non-compliance in its procurement process. However, HRD Corp said issues raised by Dato Rosli Yakob over the program, dubbed Skills Passport, have been answered and resolved in the agency's board meetings. Rosli, who is the Deputy Secretary Governance and Monitoring under the Ministry's Corporate Government Investment Companies Division, is said to have highlighted concerns that the project was been pushed through without board approval. This is according to news portal The Vibes, which said the matter was brought up in Rosalie's letter to HRD Corp Chairman Dato R. Raja Sekaran and CEO Dato Shahul Hamid Dawood. Rosalie's concerns reportedly include the potential financial implication of 53 million to 159.47 million ringgit on HRD Corp to roll out the program when the board was told by the CEO that the project would not result in any costs to the agency. HRD Corp described the allegations as false and defamatory. It said it has instructed its lawyers to initiate legal action against the vibes.
Horse Making Post Malaysia has opened its first convenience store post shop along Jalan Tuanku Abdul Rahman in Kuala Lumpur as part of its strategic transformation journey. The group, which operated 541 post offices and over 200 more post laju and mini branches as at last year, said post shop is leveraging on its unrivaled reach and retail footprint, offering a wide selection of beverages, desserts, snacks and personal care products at a very competitive price. Post Malaysia said this new concept store serves as a model for future developments in selected post offices in Malaysia, with the aim to create an even more exciting in-store experience and offer further retail convenience at the post office. The new venture comes as the courier service provider continues to explore avenues to reverse half a decade of losses, following declining mail volume and stiff competition in the parcel delivery market. Shares of Post Malaysia settled 0.91% higher at 55.5 cent, giving the group a market capitalization of 434.44 million ringgit.